Welcome to tutorial 10 and in this experiment we're going to be making the 555 oscillate. This is known as a relaxation oscillator this circuit because of the way that it's configured. So we're going to be showing how when you add a resistor capacitor circuit and we looked at ch capacitors charging and discharging in the last uh, tutorial and we're going to add those to a 555 IC buffer that we looked at previously as well and we're going to see what circuit we produce. Now I always think it's worth having a little look at a circuit diagram and trying to understand what is happening. So let's have a look at its configuration. Here is our resistor and capacitor initially. We have an LED with a current limiting resistor and they are connected to the output pin of the 555. If you remember, pin 2 and 6 were the inputs, pin 3 was the output. So when the output pin, pin 3, is low or 0 volts, the LED will be on because there is a potential difference across the LED, 5 volts to 0. When pin 3 is high, then the output will be off because there is no potential difference. So, the most interesting thing about this circuit is that you will notice that the output pin pin 3, not only going to the LED, is also going back through the 47K resistor to the input. Feeding the input back to the input is known as feedback. Okay, let's have a little look at what we're going to do. So in the circuit, we're going to change the values of resistor and capacitor. We're going to measure the rate at which the LED flashes. So let's have a quick look at that. So I'm going to turn on my power supply. Watch the LED. And on it comes. So you'll notice the LED came on and then it went off and then it comes back on again. And I'm not doing anything at all in this circuit. This circuit is doing all this on its own. It's said to be oscillating. Oscillating means changing bet between two different states continuously. Now, it's also worth mentioning here that what is happening, as well as flashing or oscillating, is that there is no stable state in this circuit. In other words, the NED is not on forever or off forever. It continuously changes. OK, the practical here is to measure the rate at which it flashes. Now, seeing as there are only two different states, the on state or off state are as equally important as one another. So we are going to measure the rate of one flash. And one flash is when it is on and when it is off, added together. So when that LED comes on, I'm going to press start. And when it comes on again, I'm going to press stop. Nine point one eight seconds. Let's do that one more time. Wait for it to come on. It goes off and wait for it to come back on again. I'll press stop. 9.39 seconds. OK, let's enter that into our table. I'm going to put an average of those two values. 9.3 seconds. So what we're going to do now, we're going to change the value of R1, but we're going to leave the value of C1 the same. So we're changing R1 for a 47K for a 100K. Turn off my power supply. And turn it on. Hopefully the LED will come on. As soon as it comes on, I'm going to press start. There we go. goes off 
and when it comes on again I'm going to press stop nineteen point eight three seconds so let's enter that into our table nineteen point eight seconds I don't think there's any need to go to two decimal places next we are going to keep the same value of R1 which is 100k and we're going to change the value of C1 and make it 10 microfarads so there's C1 making sure I get my positive and negative around the right way and I'm going to turn on my power supply and there we go so now this is flashing a lot quicker as you can see so rather than just measure one flash, just to get a bit of accuracy into it, what we're going to do, we're going to measure 10 flashes and then we'll divide our answer by 10. So when the LED comes on next, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So we had 10 flashes in 17.88 seconds. That means that one flash is one tenth of that, so 1.78 seconds. So we'll just round that up to 1.8 seconds. So a flash took 1.8 seconds. Next, we're going to change the 100 kilo ohm resistor for 220 kilo ohm, keeping the value of the capacitor the same. Turn it on. Okay, and next time it flashes, we'll start. Oh, it was a bit a bit slow there. I'll redo that one. There we go. 3.88 seconds. I could have measured 10 there, but I won't. I think that will be accurate enough. Okay, now once again, what do these results mean? Well, we can actually do a calculation with this. Let's say we wanted a flash to last 1.8 seconds. We can use a formula 2 times R times C where R is the value of the resistor and C is the value of the capacitor and work it out. But we've done this a little bit reversal uh, around the wrong uh, other way because what we've done is we've put our values in to measure the flash rate and see whether they compare to the calculated time so let's have a little look so two times in the first one two times r times c where r was 47k so two times r which is 47 exponent 3 for the k times C, which was 100 microfarads, 100 exponent minus 6, equals 9.4. So time equals 2 times R times C, which is 2 times 47K times 100 microfarads in the first one equals 9.4 seconds so let's enter that into our table and we can see that's pretty close because we measured it to be 9.3 seconds our second one time was equal to 2 times and we used a 100k in this one and we used a 100 microfarad in this one so therefore 2 times 100 exponent 3 times 100 exponent minus 6 equals 20 seconds 20 seconds and I measured that to be 19.8 so again pretty accurate 
The third example, we used a 100K resistor, so we have 2 times 100K, times, in this case, we used a 10 microfarad capacitor. So we have 2 times 100 exponent 3, times 10 exponent minus 6 for micro, equals 2 seconds. So in our example, we made it 1.8 and it should have been 2. So again, a fairly accurate practical. And then finally, the last one we used a 220 kilo ohm resistor and we used the 10 microfarad capacitor. So we used 2 times 220k times 10 exponent minus 6 for micro equals 4.4 seconds. So 4.4 seconds. That one's probably the one that's proven to be just uh, the most out here, certainly in terms of tolerance. But they're all pretty good results. 9.3 should have been 9.4. 19.8 was 20, 1.8 was 2, and 3.8 was 4.4. Now what have we learned from this experiment? Well the important thing to learn is what happens to that flash rate when we change the value of the resistor? Well, if we look here, here we kept the same value of capacitor, but we changed the value of resistor. And if you look at it, we almost doubled. In fact, just slightly over doubled the value of the resistor. But our time went from 9.3 to 19.8. So what we're saying is that if we increase the value of the resistor, we increase the length of time that it takes to flash. So it actually flashes at a slower rate. What happens to the flash rate when we change the value of the capacitor? Well, it was only here that we changed the value of the capacitor but kept the value of the resistor the same. So here the value of the capacitor has gone from 100 microfarads to 10 microfarads. And here our flash rate changed from 19.8 seconds to 1.8. In other words, the amount of time it took to go, come on and go off changed from 19.8 to 1.8. That is about a tenth of that value. And you will notice that the value of the capacitor was the tenth the value of the previous one. So if we decrease the value of the capacitor, we, we change the rate at which the time the LED is on, i.e. we increase its flash rate, make it quicker. Generally, what did you notice about the mark space ratio? Now, this is a really important term that we will come on to. But the mark space ratio is the amount of time that it spent on to the amount of time that it spent off. So I'm going to go back. Actually, perhaps we can just use this one already set up as an example. If you look at this, is there any difference? I would argue that the amount of time it is off is equal to the amount of time that it is on here. So probably the mark space ratio can be considered in ratio form as one to one. So they are the same, on and off. This is the end of tutorial 10.